Hello, everyone. So in this presentation, I'll be discussing what was Ruby's second oldest open bug and how we fixed the bug in Ruby 3.3. My name is Jeremy Evans. I'm a Ruby committer who focuses on fixing bugs in Ruby. I'm also the author of Polish Ruby Programming, which was published in English a couple years ago and was published in Japanese last month. This book is aimed at intermediate Ruby programmers and focuses on teaching principles of Ruby programming as well as trade-offs to consider when making implementation decisions. So what is the second oldest bug that I am discussing? So I'm referring to bug 4040, which has the subject system stack error with hash star A for large A. And the reproduction code given in the bug report was this simple Ruby code. This calls the array reference method on hash with the splat of a very large array with over a million entries. And it turns out that this bug is not specific to that hash method. At the time the bug was reported, this issue applied to any method when called with a splatted array if the number of arguments passed to the method is large enough. So you could reproduce the bug with the kernel puts method. You could reproduce the bug when calling a method that you defined in Ruby. And you could even reproduce the bug with a method that does not accept any arguments, such as the kernel object ID method. And that's because the error occurs while setting up the arguments for the method call before actually calling the method. So Ruby's behavior when passing a very large array splat to a method has changed over time. So back in Ruby 1.8, passing too many arguments to a method would result in the Ruby interpreter crashing and dumping core both for methods defined in C and for methods defined in Ruby. In Ruby 1.9, this condition was recognized and a system stack error was raised instead of the program crashing. Ruby 2.0 and 2.1 kept the same behavior as Ruby 1.9. Now in Ruby 2.2, Sasada-san fixed this issue for methods defined in Ruby. And that same behavior remains in Ruby 3.2. As you can probably guess, we fixed this issue in Ruby 3.3. So now calling the object ID method with a very large array splat correctly results in an argument error. And if you switch to the example code given in the bug report, you can see that it works correctly and returns a hash with a single entry. Now to start work on fixing this bug, I needed to find out where the bug is occurring. So when debugging in Ruby, I usually use GDB. And to get a general idea of how method calling works, I can run Ruby through GDB and tell Ruby to execute the itself method. And then I can set a breakpoint on the underlying C function that will be called. So after the breakpoint is hit, I can have GDB print the backtrace. And here is simplified backtrace output. We can split this backtrace into four separate sections. The bottom section is basically everything Ruby runs before calling the itself method. This section is generic method calling code, regardless of how the method was defined. This code is specific to calling methods defined in C. And at the very top, we have code specific to the itself method. Now, since this bug occurs when calling methods defined in C, it seems likely that this problem is in one of these three functions, or in one of the functions that they call. And while this is helpful, it would be best if we could see exactly where the system stack error is being raised. So we can start by grepping to see where system stack error is defined. And it's always nice when you only get a single result back. So after a few more greps to gather information, we end up looking inside the virtual machine code, looking at the line highlighted. Now there is one indication that this is what we are looking for, and that's the function name, which contains the words stack overflow. So it looks like this is the function called when the stack would overflow to raise an exception instead of crashing. So we can use GDB to see if that is correct. In this case, we'll pass code that should trigger the stack overflow and then set a breakpoint on the EC stack overflow function. And thankfully, we guessed correctly, and we can use the backtrace command to see how we got there. Most of the backtrace is the same as the previous backtrace, but I've highlighted the new lines. Now the top two lines are both for functions with stack overflow in the name. So these are likely called when a potential stack overflow has been detected and not the cause of the stack overflow. 
The function directly before those lines, named VM caller setup arg splat, is the probable cause. So here is the definition of that function. It determines which object is being splatted, and if the object being splatted is not nil, we would assume it is an array, and then we determine the length of the array to splat. Now in the normal case, we copy all objects from the array to the VM stack, and then we increase the number of arguments that the method is called with, with the length of the splatted array, subtracting one for the array itself. However, before doing any of the copying, we check for whether copying all objects to the VM stack would overflow the stack, so that a system stack error can be raised instead of the program crashing. So this is the check that is being hit when you're splatting a very large array. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to avoid this issue as long as you take the approach of copying all arguments to the VM stack. The only way to avoid this issue would be to not pass the arguments via the stack. If we go back to the initial backtrace, when calling itself without any arguments, we see that the function calling RB object itself is named Raptor Safe Call C Funct Zero. And the prototype for that function looks like this. It takes the receiver of the Ruby method, it takes the number of arguments that the Ruby method was called with, a pointer to the first argument for the method, and a function pointer for the C function to call that implements the Ruby method. Now the function calling Raptor Safe Call C Funct Zero is named VM Call C Funct with Frame. Now this function is large, so I will focus on the line calling Raptor Safe Call C Funct Zero through a function pointer. Now the important part here is the value that it is passing as a pointer to the first argument. In this case, it's always passing a pointer to the stack. Maybe if we could change this to pass a pointer to somewhere else in memory, such as the heap calling a method defined in C with a large number of arguments would work. So we can start that process back in the caller, VM caller setup arg splat function. We can reduce the code focused just on the case where there is an array to splat. If some condition is true, we should use an approach that does not copy the arguments via the stack. So one simple condition is if the number of arguments being passed to the method plus the length of the splatted array is over some high number, say 1,000, then do not use the stack for argument passing. Now, how should you pass arguments if you're not going to pass them on the stack? And one of the easiest ways to do so is to create a temporary Ruby array for the arguments, and then instead of passing a pointer to the stack, we can pass a pointer to the first element of that array. So here is the code that implements this approach. We start off by creating a Ruby array with the expected capacity. We then hide the array, and this makes sure that the array cannot be accessed via object space. We copy the methods before the splatted array to the temporary array. Then we copy the elements of the splatted array to the temporary array. Now we still pass a pointer to the temporary array of arguments on the VM stack. So we need to adjust SP, the stack pointer, to reflect that. Since there is only one argument on the stack, we adjust the calling information to, to show only one argument. Now this is correct from a stack perspective, but it is incorrect from a method calling perspective. And finally, we set a new flag on the calling information named heap argv to flag that the arguments are being passed on the heap in a temporary Ruby array instead of on the stack. So back to the function for calling methods defined in C. Now that we have set up the temporary array of arguments on the heap, we need to make changes to use a pointer to the first element of that array instead of using a pointer to the stack. So we need to recognize when we should use the temporary array for arguments. I mean, we do this by checking for that heap argv flag that we set earlier. Here is the code for using the temporary array for arguments. We get a pointer to the temporary array of arguments. Now the point, that pointer is located on the stack. We then get a pointer to the first element of that temporary array. Now that is located on the heap. We use the length of the temporary array as the number of method arguments, and then we call the C function using the correct number of arguments and a pointer to the first element of that Ruby array. And while the changes I went over are the most important changes, there were a few changes needed in other functions mostly to check if the heap argv flag was set and to adjust argument handling in that case.
Now, I don't have time in this presentation to discuss the other places that needed to be changed, but it required adding about five different checks for the heap argv function, or heap argv flag. So after making those changes, it did not take much more work to get Ruby's test suite passing with this change. Now, unfortunately, while the test passed, the change resulted in a minor slowdown. So the additional checks added slowed down method calling microbenchmarks by up to 7%. And considering how few users are actually affected by this change, slowing down method calling to such a degree was not acceptable. So I tried a couple of different approaches to speed up uh, the implementation, and ultimately I was get, able to get the performance difference to be small enough that the microbenchmark no longer showed it as slower. But my approach was a little invasive, making multiple changes to a couple of methods that are used in the generic method dispatch code. Since this issue had already been fixed for methods defined in Ruby, and we were trying to fix it for methods defined in C, it would be nice if the changes could only be made for the code for methods defined in C. And in discussions with Sasada-san, I mentioned that we could switch to that approach, but it would probably result in more duplication. Now, Sasada-san took it upon himself to implement that non-invasive approach. Now, it turns out that I was right about the duplication. So here is the VM call C func function before the changes, and to give the correct scope for the amount of changes, I'm gonna shrink the font size. So now we can review the function after the changes. As you can see, this is quite a large increase in lines. So these two lines in the normal case, where you're not passing a large array splat, use the standard argument setup functions, and those two lines are replaced with expanded and customized versions in the case where you're splatting a large array. Now there's a maintainability trade-off here. So one option is that you can add features to generic functions making those functions more complicated. And this can make the generic functions slower and make it more difficult to debug code that does not benefit from the features you're adding. On the plus side, it can make maintenance easier, especially if future code can benefit from the features that you're adding to the generic functions. So my approach chose this trade-off. Another option is to duplicate the parts of the generic functions that you need and modify them for the specific use case and this can result in faster code, and it localizes the change. However, it can make maintenance more challenging if you need to make the same change in multiple cases. So Sasada-san's approach chose this trade-off. Sasada-san's patch was merged back in January, ensuring that the second oldest bug will be fixed in Ruby 3.3. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. That's what I thought when I started working on this presentation. It turns out this bug is not a single bug, but a general class of bugs. And my initial patch and Sasada-san's patch only fixed a single instance of this class of bugs. So this bug was not fixed, or at least not completely fixed. So I'll go over some code that still raised system stack error for large argument splats after the patch was committed. Now, I mentioned earlier that Sasada-san made changes to Ruby 2.2 to allow this code to work. However, if you replace the normal singleton method definition with the equivalent defined singleton method call, it raised a system stack error. And understand why normal method definition approach worked, but the block-based approach failed, you need to understand that Ruby has multiple method types, each of which is handled differently internally. Ruby has a C function named VM call method each type, which handles all of the different method types that Ruby supports. A simplified version of this method is shown here. Now, this function uses a C switch statement on the type of method, similar to a Ruby case expression. Normal Ruby methods defined with def use the isec method type. And logic specific to calling isec methods is in VM call isec setup. This is the code path that Sasada-san fixed in Ruby 2.2 to allow normal methods to accept large argument splats. Ruby methods defined by C functions use the C func method type. And logic specific to calling C func methods is in VM call C func. So this is the code path that was fixed by my initial patch and Sasada-san's patch. Ruby methods defined with define method or define singleton method use the B method type. So I think B method is short for block method. These are methods defined by blocks. Now logic specific to calling B methods is in VM call B method. Now this is one code path that had not been fixed, which is why calling a B method 
with a large argument splat, still raised a system stack error even after Sasada San's patch was merged. Now, unrelated to the current bug, but useful to know, is that Ruby uses a call cache to improve performance. So the first time you call a method, the call cache directs you to the generic slower method dispatch function. However, once Ruby figures out a more specific and faster method handler, it updates the call cache so that future method calls at the same call site can jump directly to the more optimized method. Now going back to the VM call B method function, we need to determine why it fails. So here is the definition of the VM call B method function. And there was one similarity here with the VM call C func function before we fixed the bug for C func methods. And that similarity is in the use of the caller setup arg function. So that looking back at the backtrace for the stack overflow for C methods, or C func methods, we see that the stack overflow happens during the call to the caller setup arg function. It turns out that all callers of this function are vulnerable to this issue. And in Ruby 3.2, all method types other than ISEC use caller setup arg, which is why they were all vulnerable to this issue. Now, I mentioned earlier that my initial patch uh, to fix this issue made the generic argument setup code more complicated, while Sasadasan's patch was less invasive because it only modified the logic for C-Funk methods. So the duplication approach may be preferable when you only have a problem in a specific case. However, because all usage of caller setup arg is vulnerable to this issue, the duplication approach is not maintainable. The only maintainable approach that fixes the issue for all cases requires complicating the generic code. Now here's the initial code that I discussed earlier to avoid the system stack error. And between when I originally submitted my pull request and when I started working on this presentation and found these additional bugs, Sasadasan had modified the related code to significantly improve performance. So I had to make some changes to my initial patch to adjust for Sasadasan's changes. Now one of the changes is at the point that this code is called, the VM stack has already removed the splatted array. And another of the changes is that any keyword splat is passed as a separate argument and not as the last element of that array. So instead of a uh, separate RB array new kappa and RB object hide functions, I, I found there was an RB array hidden new function that combined those features. So I switched to calling that. Now the capacity of the temporary array is set to the number of arguments before the splat plus the number of arguments in the array being splatted plus one extra for a possible keyword hash. The other important change is that I switched to storing a pointer to the temporary array in the calling structure instead of only storing the pointer on the stack. Now this was mostly for simplicity so that I could easily reference it later. If we go back to the VM call B method function, we can modify it to use this new approach. Here are the changes needed. The first change is the addition of an argument to caller setup arg for whether it is safe to use a temporary array for arguments. Now in this case, it is. If there was a temporary array created to handle a large argument splat, we get a, first, we get a pointer to the first element in that array. And this is instead of allocating space on the C stack and then copying all arguments from the VM stack to the C stack. We need to decrement the stack pointer by two since the array is considered one argument and this is to match the stack pointer adjustment in the normal case. Failure to adjust the stack pointer correctly results in SPBP mismatch errors or failing CFP consistency checks, both of which are time consuming to debug. Now unfortunately, this change did not fix the issue for B methods. And that's because we have a similar issue later in the VM. So three nested function calls after calling VM call B method body the VM calls a function named invoke isec block from C, which copies all arguments to the VM stack. So first raising a system stack error, if copying the arguments would overflow the stack. So I worked around this issue by using the same approach I used in caller setup arg, by creating a temporary Ruby array and copying the elements into that temporary Ruby array. Now if the number of arguments provided is over some limit, we call a newly added VM argv Ruby array function to create the temporary Ruby array, copy the arguments from argv into it, and then return a pointer 
to the Ruby array. We actually always pass an array of two arguments in this case. The first argument is that temporary array. The second argument is always a keyword hash. If keyword splat is true, that means the last argument of the array is keyword arguments. So it's removed from the array and stored as a separate argument. If keyword splat is false, then we add an empty keyword hash or empty hash for the keyword arguments. So this is so Ruby will not treat a flagged keyword hash passed as a regular argument as a keyword splat. With those changes, we can now call methods defined with define method or define singleton method with a large array splats. However, that was not the only case that previously failed. There were other cases that failed as well. While passing a large array splat worked with normal method definitions starting in Ruby 2.2, if you called the same method using send, you got a system stack error. If you used symbol to proc and called the resulting proc with a large array splat, you got a system stack error. If you created a method object for the method and called that with a large array splat, system stack error. If you defined method missing and then called method that did not exist with a large array splat, you got a system stack error. Additionally, passing a large number of arguments in a C extension using RB yield block also resulted in a system stack error. Now those were the most important cases that needed to be fixed where it could be useful to, to handle a large number of arguments. There were also some cases where the method type accepts only zero or one argument where passing a large array splat resulted in system stack error instead of argument error. So if we go back to the normal method definition and change the argument splat to a regular argument, when calling the method with a large array splat, it would be best to have an argument error raise. But Ruby would raise the system stack error instead in this case. Similarly, if you have a class that uses at here reader, calling the method defined with a large array splat raises the system stack error instead of an argument error. Same issue is true for at here writer. If you create a struct class, Calling the member reader method for an instance of the struct with a large array splat raises a system stack error instead of an argument error. Same issue is true for the member setter method. Now squashing this bug, both for method types that could accept a large number of arguments and to get the correct exception raised for method types that only accept zero or one argument took quite a long time. And then one issue for this, as I mentioned, is that this issue is not really a single bug, but a whole class of related bugs. One thing to be aware of is that almost no code in Ruby's test suite passes a large array splat. So running the test suites that come with Ruby would be unlikely to catch issues in the changes I was making. So to get a higher level of confidence that the bug fixes were actually working, I did most of my debugging by forcing temporary array usage for all method calls with splats instead of the default behavior of only using temporary arrays for splats of large arrays. Eventually, I was able to get the entire test suite passing, fixing all cases I was aware of were passing a large array splat raised system stack error. However, just because all bugs have been fixed does not necessarily mean that the fix should be committed. When deciding whether to commit anything, you have to have an understanding of the costs and benefits of committing, and you should feel that the benefits are worth the costs. Now in this case, the benefit is that you can splat an array when calling any Ruby method and you should get the expected behavior regardless of the size of the array. Now, I think that's a significant benefit, but the actual need to pass a large array splat is rare, and it's almost always better to pass a large array of arguments as a normal argument instead of splatting the array. Now, there are significant costs associated with the fix. For one, the fixes are invasive, much more so than my initial attempt to fix the issue for CFUNC methods. And for another, there is a minor slowdown associated with this change. And with all the work to improve Ruby's performance, committing this patch can feel like a step backwards. I thought it would be unlikely that committers would accept a minor slowdown to fix these corner cases. Now thankfully, due to my work on fixing these bugs, I learned a lot about Ruby's internals. And with what I learned, I developed a series of patches to optimize method calling in certain cases. And my goal with this series of patches was to offset the minor slowdown that was introduced by the bug fixes. One of the optimizations was to B method calling. So here is the code for VM call B method again. One thing to notice is that this function always calls caller setup arg. The reason it does this is so it can flatten the arguments into a C array and pass a pointer to the first argument to VM call B method body.
I determined that this call to caller setup arg is not actually needed in the common case where the block for the B method is defined in Ruby. It is needed for other cases where the block for the B method was defined in C or was created by symbol to proc. So I decided to split B method call handling into two paths, one to handle the case where the block is defined in Ruby and another for other blocks. All of this code is necessary to determine whether the block was defined in Ruby. And if the block was defined in Ruby, we can then call an optimized function that does not need to use caller setup arg. If the block was not defined in Ruby, we call another function that uses caller setup arg, which is similar to the previous implementation. In either case, before calling that function, we update the call cache. And the reason we update the call cache is so that future calls at the same call site can jump directly to the optimized method and skip all of this code. So I added some benchmarks, and I found that these changes improved B method calling by 40% in simple cases and up to 180% in keyword cases. Another of the optimizations was to method missing calls. So here's the top of VM call method missing body before the bug fix and the optimization. I determined that this call to caller setup arg function here is unnecessary as method missing calls do not need to modify existing arguments, they just need to add an argument before those arguments. So the call to caller setup arg can be removed completely. However, you do need to fix the calling flags. So the calling flags include information about whether the call includes an argument splat or keyword arguments. Since caller setup arg was used previously, new calling flags were created. However, when removing the caller setup arg function call, you can just copy the calling flags from the original method call that resulted in the method missing, and that fixes the issue. So that simple change improved method missing calls by 10% in simple cases, and up to 100% for calls involving keyword arguments. I made a similar change for calls to symbol procs, which are procs created by symbol to proc. That improved performance 5% for simple calls, and up to 100% for keyword argument calls. I also made a similar change for method calls using send, which improved performance 5% for simple calls and up to 115% for keyword argument calls. To see the overall effect of the bug fixes combined with the optimizations, I used Widget Bench. So Widget Bench was developed by Shopify to test widget performance, but it's also very useful as a set of general benchmarks. It contains 33 separate benchmarks, and results show that performance was about the same in 12 cases. Eight of the benchmarks got slower in spite of the optimizations, up to 3% slower in the worst case. However, 13 benchmarks got faster, up to 10% faster, because the performance increase from the optimizations was higher than the performance decrease from the bug fixes. So after finishing those method calling optimizations, I brought this issue up as a topic last month during the monthly developer meeting. And this way other committers could provide feedback and Matt's could decide whether the benefits were worth the costs. There was some concern over the performance and invasiveness of the changes. However, I ultimately received approval to merge the changes. Now, there is one main issue. I mentioned earlier that I fixed all the bugs that I was aware of, but there is really a caveat added. In truth, I fixed all bugs in the virtual machine. It turns out the YJIT did not support the changes I was making. So the YJIT tests on ARM64 generally failed, with occasional failures on AMD64. So I discussed the issue with the YJIT team, and thankfully they were able to fix the YJIT issues very easily. After the widget issues were fixed and one round, last round of testing, I was able to merge the changes, ensuring that the second oldest bug in all of its incarnations will finally be fixed in Ruby 3.3. Now here are the lessons I learned from my experience fixing these bugs. First, just because a bug is old does not mean it cannot be fixed. Splatting a very large array in a method call have been a problem since Ruby supported splatting arrays, and this issue was known for over a decade before I started work on fixing it. In general, it just takes one person with determination to fix the bug. Second, fixing an old bug is often a learning process that teaches you new things that you would probably not otherwise have learned. Without the exp experience I gained from fixing these bugs, I would not have been able to implement the performance optimizations that I discussed. And finally, do not worry if you cannot fix any Ruby bug perfectly by yourself. As this issue showed, other committers will likely be available to help you improve your bug fixes so they can be committed. Ruby currently has over 80 open bugs in the bug tracker that are over five years old, just waiting for you to fix. We look forward to your contributions. I hope you had fun learning about Ruby's second oldest bug.
and how he fixed it in Ruby 3.3. If you enjoyed this presentation and want to read more of my thoughts on Ruby programming, please consider picking up a copy of Polished Ruby Programming. That concludes my presentation. I'd like to thank all of you for listening to me. A special thank you to Shopify and Cookpad for sponsoring my travel to Ruby Kagi. If you have any questions, please ask me during the break. Arigatou gozaimasu.